Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Savell. Welcome to our broadcast today. I'm excited about the message I'm gonna be sharing with you. We're in Fort Worth, downtown Fort Worth in the Kenneth Copeland Believers Convention, Southwest Believers Convention. This is our 40th year for this convention. I've had the privilege in speaking in each and every one of them. And last night, we had a wonderful time. And I preached a message that God gave me actually a number of years ago, and I've only preached it one other time, and it's called, God Will Smite Your Debt. And it is powerful, and I believe you're going to be blessed by it. I want to encourage you to watch it very closely, take notes if at all possible, and get ready to receive a very powerful word from God. God wants to smite your debt. Now, you're going to have to listen to find out what I mean by that. So watch now, then I'll be back in a few moments. I want you to open your Bibles, first of all, to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Very familiar chapter in the Bible. You all know it. Talking about the blessings of Abraham. <clears throat> and beginning in verse 1, And it shall come to pass... If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. And the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he had sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do. Now I want you to back up to verse 7. And the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The title of my message tonight is God will smite your enemies. God will smite your enemies. Now the word smite means to come down hard against with great force or with a great blow. It also means to to destroy the life of. That's what it means to smite. God told Moses to tell the children of Israel, and you would, if you'd like to go there with me, it's found in the, uh, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And this was told them by the Lord through Moses while they were in bondage to Egypt. And it says in verse 20, I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt and all my wonders which I do in the midst thereof 
And after that, he will let you go. After that, he will let you go. I don't know about you, but I would never want to be on the other end of God's smiting. Amen. He said, I will smite them and they will let you go. I guess so. Wouldn't be any question about it after you've been smitten. The message translation reads this way. I will hit Egypt where it hurts. <laughs> My miracles will send them reeling. And then later he tells them in the message translation, I'll see to it that you get a hearty send off and you won't leave empty handed. So when God smites the enemy, his people, God's people do not leave empty handed. They get a hearty send-off. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm headed for a hearty send-off. And I'm not leaving empty-handed. Now in Exodus chapter 12, if you go there with me, Exodus chapter 12, and verse 36 and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent them unto them such things as, re as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. The message translation says, oh yes, they picked those Egyptians clean. <laughs> I love that. They picked them clean, praise God. And it all happened because God promised that he would smite Egypt, smite the children of Israel's enemy. Now, as you know, the apostle Paul tells us in Galatians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. If you want to turn there, you can. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So shout with me, Abraham's blessing belongs to me. Abraham's blessing belongs to me. Uh, I'm not sure that was a shout. Shout with me, Abraham's blessing belongs to me. And then verse 29, and if ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now shout with me again. I am Abraham's seed. I am Abraham's seed. And I am an heir, I am an heir. According, to according to the promise. Now let's go back to that promise or one of them. And I shall smite thine enemy. He'll come against thee one way and flee before these seven ways. Hallelujah. Well, we know the Apostle Paul also tells us that our enemy is not flesh and blood. The Democrats are not our enemy. People in Congress are not our enemy. People of other nations are not our enemy. People of a different race are not our enemy. We have an enemy and his name is Satan. He's out to kill, steal, and to destroy. Paul says there are principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world that are our enemies. But one of the greatest enemies of God's people today is debt and lack. Debt and lack. Say it with me. Debt, debt. and lack. Satan wants the church to stay in debt. He wants God's people to stay in debt. He wants us to experience lack every day of our lives. When there's lack, you can't accomplish very much. You can't, you can't really uh, obey the commands of the Lord because one of the, one of the commands is, God told Abraham, I will bless you and thou shalt be a blessing. And when there's lack and when there's debt, overwhelming debt, 
then it's not likely that you're able to be a blessing. Can you say amen? amen? I had the Lord tell me years ago, way back when I first started out, and I, I began to learn about the blessing of Abraham from Brother Copeland and Brother Hagen. And uh, I remember the Lord saying to me one day, uh, if you're going to confess the blessing of Abraham, then accept also the call of Abraham. And the call of Abraham was to be a blessing. Amen. A blessing. I asked the Lord one time, I said, what is a blessing? And he said, it's an instrument through which my divine favor flows into the life of another, preventing misfortune in their lives. God wants us to be a blessing. He wants us to be a vessel through which his divine favor flows, preventing misfortune in the lives of others. Amen. That's one of my greatest joys is being a blessing. I love being a blessing. And the apostle Paul tells us uh, in Ephesians as well, uh, or in uh, Galatians as well, that we are to be mindful to be a blessing. My wife wrote a book a number of years ago, Born to Be a Blessing. You and I were born to be a blessing. Yes. Amen. The Bible says that we ought to do good unto all men, but especially unto those who are of the household of faith. And you say amen. amen. So uh, uh, lack and debt prevents us from fulfilling God's command on our lives. I'm not only to believe to be blessed in every area of my life, but I'm also to be a blessing, helping others. And that is one of my greatest joys, praise God. I get up every day asking the Lord to uh, lead me to people that I can be a blessing to. Now, don't write me a letter and say, well, if you want to be a blessing to me, I'd be happy to be a recipient. <laughs> I don't like to be conned. I said, I asked the Lord to lead me. Amen. I remember one time in Anaheim in the Believers Convention, I got a call at three o'clock in the morning. I was shocked that, you know, somebody knew my room and, and I got a call at three o'clock in the morning because normally we, we would register under a different name so that we could sleep at night, you know. People calling all night wanting certain things. And... Uh, Three o'clock in the morning, I answered the phone. I said, hello. He said, is this Jerry Savelle? I said, it is. He said, when are you going to obey God? I said, what are you talking about? He said, God told me that you were going to pay my house off tonight. I said, well, sir, that's interesting. He never said anything to me about it. He said, well, do you have a word for me? I said, yes, I do. Go home. I'm not paying your house off. Now, if God told me to, I'd already done it. Because I learned a long time ago, uh, I, I saw in Paul's writings about children, obey your parents. And another translation says, do it quickly and quietly. And that became my children's less favorite verse. <laughs> I told them, girls, you obey your mama, you obey your daddy, quickly and quietly. Amen. And the Lord said, if you're going to tell your children that, then I would like for you to do the same. When I speak to you, obey me quickly and quietly. Don't argue with me. Don't come up with a better idea. Don't tell me why you can't. Don't give me an excuse. Anybody ever been in the military? In the military, you don't question orders Amen. You don't question orders. And when they get on to you, even if you felt like they didn't have a right, I, I really, I really was sorry when they did away with a draft. I think every young man needs to be drafted. It'll make a man out of you. And I remember when I was in basic training, I thought, dear Lord, what did I do to these people? Why are they so mean? I was called names I'd never heard of. <laughs> and uh, I remember the drill sergeant said, when I give you an order, you don't question it. 
If the, the company commander gives you an order, you don't question it. And if you failed to do it and he, uh, you know, jumps on you about it, you respond with no excuse, sir. No excuse, sir. Amen. Amen. I think God would appreciate that out of us. You know, when we fail to do what he tells us to do. And he says, why didn't you obey me? No excuse, sir. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says that we are to be a blessing, but it's hard to be a blessing when you're strapped with debt and you're always battling lack. Amen. I asked the Lord one time, I said, why is it so important to you that your people be out of debt? He, calls, he said, because then everything you have is a potential seed. Oh, See, you, you can't sow your car if you don't have it paid for. You can't sow your house if it's not paid for. As Brother Hagin would say, did you go home or are you still here? <laughs> Amen. I, I've had the Lord several times ask me, to sow my car into somebody else's life. And if I was still paying notes on it, I couldn't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't go to the bank and say, the Lord told me to give it away. <laughs> they said, that's fine. We don't care if you get away. Just pay the note off first. <laughs> Amen. I had the Lord tell me to give my house away. Uh, years ago, I'd, I'd bought some land out on the uh, south side of Fort Worth and bought a little farmhouse. And as I mentioned in one of the previous services, I was born on a farm in Mississippi. I'm a country boy. I like my space. And I had cattle and I had horses and, and, uh, uh, you know, I was, I was in my element, you know, and, and four words started coming that way. And I was leasing building, a, a, a building for my ministry headquarters. We had uh, a, a beautiful, they had built a beautiful tower and we were leasing two floors in that tower and I'm helping to pay somebody else's building off, you know, by my lease payment every month. And it was quite large. And uh, the Lord impressed upon me that it's time to build my own buildings. And so I started looking for land. And come to find out the, the land where my house was, Fort Worth was moving that direction. And so the value of that land was increasing, you know, all the time. So I said, Lord, and, and, and Carolyn and I discussed it. I said, I'm just going to give my land to the ministry and give my house to the ministry. In fact, when I did, I became at that time, and this long time ago, the largest contributor to my own ministry. <laughs> Amen. And I gave my land, I gave the house to the ministry. And then later we tore the house down and built our international headquarters there where we still are to this day. But I, I, I couldn't have done that if the house wasn't paid for. Amen. Amen. Now, like Jesse said the other night, one of the things that really uh, hit home with him is when he first heard Brother Copeland talking about, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. Now, I heard Kenneth Copeland preach that in 1969, and I was in, the, in debt up to here when I heard it. I had business debts. I owned an automotive business, and it was deep in debt. I had personal debts. I just... My father-in-law just built us a new home uh, and I'm paying notes on it. I'm paying notes on the car that Carolyn drove. I'm paying notes on the truck that I drove. I'm paying notes on the tools uh, and the Snap-on Tool Company. Oh, they'd come by my shop every day. And I just knew I had to have what they were offering. How can you work on a car anymore without these tools? And they'd say, Jerry, just pay what you can. It may be $10 a week or $20 a month. And every time they come by, I kept adding to it. I kept adding to it. I was forced to live by faith. 
<laughs> I was forced to believe God to get out of debt because they wouldn't loan me anymore. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And when I heard Brother Copeland say, oh, no man, nothing but love, I thought, how in the world could you possibly live that way? Now, Carolyn's mom and dad, they had lived that way all of their married life. My mom and dad did. My dad was in debt from the time I was born. So we began to believe God to get out of debt. And it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in a week. It didn't happen in a month. It was several months before we could say, praise God, we're now debt free. And we have been that way for years and years and years and years. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember uh, <clears throat> several years ago, I was in Australia and uh, I was preaching at Hillsong. And Pastor Brian asked me to come the next morning and, and teach in a, uh, it was actually a millionaire's club people in his church that were millionaires and multimillionaires, and he wanted me to come speak to them. And I thought, what in the world would Jerry Savelle say to a group of multimillionaires? And it came up in my spirit to say this. It's wonderful when you have no debt and your largest household expense is your giving. Amen. When you don't have debt and, and your largest household expense is your giving. And boy, did I get a lot of questions afterwards. Amen. It's wonderful. Carol and I live to give. That's our greatest joy. We love when the Lord impresses upon us to pay somebody's house off. We, we, I, don't, I don't think you'd mind if we say this. These sweet people are on staff with us and we just help them get in a new home. Amen. Amen. We just help them get in a new home. Uh, a friend of mine in Shreveport, Louisiana, we just help them get in a new home. That's, that's a great joy. Now, I'm not, I'm not telling that uh, to brag on me. What I'm saying is God wants us to be able to do things like that. That's what being a blessing is. But we can't do it if we're still deep in debt and in lack all the time. And I'll drink to that. Amen? We can't do it if we're in debt and experiencing lack all the time. Now, I'll say it again. One of the greatest enemies of God's people today is debt and lack. Amen. You just can't do the things that you'd like to do for your family, for other people, if you're deep in debt and strapped with lack. So that is our enemy. But God said, I will smite your enemy. Let me give you the definition for smite once again. To come down hard against with great force or with a great blow. To destroy the life of. Now when I preached this in Anaheim years ago, I'm talking a long, long time ago. I'm still getting testimonies of people who that night did what the Lord instructed us to do and they began to get out of debt almost immediately and some of them over a period of time and I'm still getting letters to this day of people saying, I was in that meeting and that's the meeting where I got out of debt. God smote my debt. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Now, one of the greatest enemies, as I said, is debt and lack. 
It, and, and it's actually under the curse. Deuteronomy 28, 48 says that under the curse, you're in want of all things. You're in want of all things. And that's certainly not God's best for you. And it's not God's best for any of his people. God's best is Deuteronomy 28, 11. Plenteous in goods. Plenteous in goods. The message translation says, God will lavish you with good things. Hallelujah. I like, I like the word lavish. That means you're going to have more than one. <laughs> Do you need God to meet your financial needs? Have you ever wondered how to convince God to bless you? Today's special offer contains Jerry Savelle's prophetic book, Principles of Supernatural Increase, and his three CD series, Increase God's Way. In this revealing special package, Dr. Jerry Savelle clearly sets forth the biblical principles of supernatural increase, including your covenant right to increase, how God moves supernaturally, and common deceptions that bring poverty and defeat. God desires that you move to a higher level in every area of your life, spiritually, financially, professionally, and socially. You don't have to convince God to bless you. It's already His plan. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Supernatural Increase Special Package. Embracing these principles on a consistent basis, you'll soon experience supernatural increase as never before. Well, praise the Lord. I trust you enjoyed the message and we're going to continue it on next week's broadcast. So I want to encourage you to make your plans to join with me. You don't want to miss the closing part of this message. It is so powerful and God has something very special for you. So make your plans to join with me again next week. Before we leave the air, let me remind you our special resource package this week, my book, brand new book, Principles of Supernatural Increase. This is a powerful book that will teach you how to position yourself to receive supernatural increase from God. And then right along with it, Increase God's Way, three CDs, and it's such a powerful series, I know you're gonna be blessed by it. So if you'd like to order it, I encourage you to do so right now. Go to our website, jerrysavelle.org, or you can look on the screen right now and it'll give you the information about how to order it. And I wanna encourage you to do it because these are powerful resources that I know are going to bless you and inspire your faith. So once again, join with me next week as we continue this message on God will smite your debt. Until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world. 